A uh, big story this week has to be the claim in divorce proceedings that Earl Spencer had affairs with 12 women in five months, which answers the age-old conundrum why toffs are always known as knobs. <laughs> but, uh, we now come to our Great Men of History section. We've featured all the top politicians on this show, Mikhail Gorbachev, Douglas Hurd, Edward Heath and Dana, obviously. But uh, now we come to the former president of the Republic of South Africa, who will always be remembered as the man who implemented the handover to majority rule. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome F.W. de Klerk. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not quite sure how I should address you. Do I call you F.W. or if we get on, do I call you F? Or you, you're Clive <laughs> and I'm F.W. I'm, f I'm happy with that. You can be F.W., I'll just be C, which is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, look, I, in my introduction, I obviously mentioned your, your part in a, a, a big historical uh, procedure. Because uh, in uh, 1994, there was the first elections in South Africa for all races to take part in. So, 1994, <laughs> why did it take so long? to get to that position? Well, firstly, uh, there was a lot of preparation to yeah. do. Uh, the reform which led to that election really started already in the, in the early 80s. Yeah. And already in 1986, al although nobody would believe us, the National Party abandoned the policy of separate development or apartheid or whatever you called it. Mm. Then we reached the stage where we had to implement and uh, it was my privilege then to be elected leader of my party and, and to decide to take a quantum leap and, and rather th there's a saying in South Africa that if you have to cut off the tail of a dog, it's better to cut it off with one clean stroke and not little bit by little bit. Right. Because then the pain yes. comes back all okay, the time. Okay, right. Hang on, you'll be, you'll be taking over from Rolf Harris. If you're not <laughs> but, uh, that's a, well, I don't know. It, when, when, when you became president, uh, nobody really was expecting you to be the, the person who was going to make this big change. You, you hadn't been identified with a no, the, strongly uh, reforming wing of yeah, anything. No, the media like to picture me as an arch-conservative. Yeah. But Did I've been so comfortable yes. throughout the whole reform process. I was enthusiastic about it and it was a great privilege when I got the power and the authority as a leader, mm. as the president of South Africa, to lead the process from our side. I didn't do it on my own. No, but you were, we also you were needed leaders from the other side. So in the sort of 50s, 60s, 70s, were you thinking this is a ridiculous system, we must change it? Or was there a moment when you thought Wait a minute, what, are we, are we, what sort of country are we building? We here? didn't have, uh, none of us have, and neither did I, a Damascus Road experience no. where one night we went to bed still believing in separate development and the next morning we got up and see, yeah. and say, now I see the light. No, it didn't happen like that. It, was, was, it? it was a process. Why did I support that policy when I was a student, when I was a young lawyer? Yeah. Uh, I supported it because I believed that it could bring justice to all South Africans. What well, the was separate development could what bring was justice. The, vis the vision was to create a little Europe in South Africa. That was the vision yeah, but that the, we supported. But, but that but wasn't anything like how it was developed because you didn't have the separate countries. Like you had one race who had the, the politic political jobs, could vote, had all the money, no, no. and the other races who were scattered around, what? made to belong. No, to, I mean, you, you're a man of history, but not to rewrite history. But it was getting efforts. nowhere to have a, a parliament for blacks and a parliament for coloureds and a parliament for Indians. Those, those sort of... We're never going to get anywhere once you're, once you're in that battle. Are you now going to have a parliament for Scots and a parliament yeah. for Welsh? Yeah. And so <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not my policy, and, and you know that's not at all, that's not at all comparable, is it? Fact because is the, because the Scots are already running the entire government, so, <laughs> so the fact that they happen to have a parliament in Scotland is yes. neither here nor there. It wasn't for, you know, Scots can only be, be up there in you having in the European Union a parliament for the British and a parliament for the French? Yeah, it's but everybody's so got to vote it's in the... It's not so the, the reprehensible, but in the end it failed. Why did it fail? Because it was, uh, it was suppressing the, the aspirations of 80% of the no, people. No, no, because the people, the people did not accept the root of getting full political rights that we proposed. Demographic and economic realities worked against it. And in the end, it resulted in suppression, in minority domination, yeah. in unjustifiable, in morally unjustifiable 
discrimination and the whole policy yeah. became morally unjustifiable. Now, when Nelson Mandela was released from prison, which he obviously played a, a part in the negotiations and then the decision to release him, uh, were you uh, pleased that you know, he'd been, what, 27 years in a prison? He might have come out a terrifically bitter man or a cowed down kind of, but he came out, he has as closest to a sort of saintly quality as any world leader can, can, uh, can present, and yet he'd been in that, were you pleased about that? I have a, a great appreciation for the lack of bitterness which President Mandela has shown, for his commitment to reconciliation. And at the very first meeting that the two of us had, he was brought from jail to my office, which is now his office. Mm. Well, there you go. We sat there <laughs> yeah. and we measured each other. We had to decide, can we trust each other? Can we do mm -hmm. business? Is there a real commitment from both sides to, to make reconciliation and negotiation work? Will we be able to steer our respective constituencies away from the precipice on which we were standing? And both of us have publicly stated afterwards that we reported to our power bases. Yeah. Yes, we can do business. Yes, we believe there's integrity and there's commitment. Let's take the quantum leap. So did you think, uh, seeing him, good Lord, this is ridiculous. This man's been in prison for 27 years, imprisoned as a hothead revolutionary. Or did you think, hmm, the South African prison service has done really well to reform him and put him <laughs> into a, a good frame of mind? No. Uh, it wasn't as simple as no, that. No, no, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the other thing, because uh, it's sort of topical at the moment, there's the, this Commission for Truth and Reconciliation, which I think you set up. And the object of that really was that people, not to have a trial exactly, but to come forward and admit mistakes and say, well, yes, I did do this and I, I murdered there, or I took part in that. Is it working out the way you were hoping? Not exactly. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we have strong criticism against what can be described as a tendency towards one-sidedness in the energy yes. and the resources that they allocate to investigate the truth. We want the whole truth. But it, and we would like yeah. to see a somewhat more even-handed handling of the matter. Didn't you somewhat undermine it? Because you, you yourself appeared before it and said, well, I, I didn't know anything was going on. I didn't know there was a third oh, force I never attacking. Said, I'm sorry. I never said I didn't know what was going on. I yeah. said I didn't know everything which was going on. <laughs> and there's a big difference. You didn't know the nasty bits. So I, but, didn't, but, yeah. I didn't know of that which was specifically taken, sort of uh, 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 kept away from me. W there were also people and I believe they were relatively small in number, who were as much against the reforms that I led as they were against the ANC. Yeah. They didn't want that. They felt I was selling out the country. But I mean the whole apparatus of the state with secret Everything agents they and did. assassinations abroad, activists but, but uh, thrown out of windows at home. Did you know about that? Have you been to the commission and said, well, I knew that was going on, but I, I was referred every bit or scrap of evidence which came to the fore, every allegation that security forces were involved in serious crimes, in assassination, in cold-blooded murder, and said, please investigate it, get to the facts. I empowered them. I, we brought in mm. British assistance, helping them to do their investigations, to ensure that there would be objectivity in the yeah. investigations. So I didn't leave any stone unturned. Do you go now in fear of your life in South Africa, but that you might be assassinated as the person who betrayed your people, as no, some people they would were, they You know were, what I mean? There were at times serious threats, and surely the threat never disappears. Yeah. But uh, one cannot live in fear. Uh, uh, I, I am not uh, fatalistic about it. I cooperate with security people who are charged to, mm. to, uh, to secure yeah. my position. Yeah. But it's wonderful now that I've retired from active party politics to have much more of a private life again. I, I yearned for it when I was in public life. The other thing we hear about South Africa here is that the crime rate has just gone crazy. It, it, since, since, the, uh, since the handing over of power, there, there's murders and there's violence, and that's not just around Winnie Mandela's household, but just, uh, <laughs> just uh, you know, everywhere. Um, 
<laughs> is that something that worries you? Because we, we haven't had the bloodbath. Some people say oh, there'll be a bloodbath once the power is... And obviously... Oh, that between, was averted. That was averted. Nonetheless, in a more sort of mundane level, there are, there are murders, there are robberies, there are people held up at traffic There's lights. There's no question. The crime rate is unacceptably yeah. high. 30 times the rate here, there something like are, that? Uh, well, I wouldn't say yeah. in all respects, but yes, it yeah. is higher. Yeah. But there's a deeper problem, and that is that two generations of people almost have been taught in the revolutionary situation which we had, that you're a hero if you break the law, yes. that you shouldn't have respect for authority. How does this fit in with William Mandela's appearances before the Truth Commission? Because in a sense, she's sort of on trial at the moment, and yet she's still retaining uh, a, a substantial political power base, as we understand it, within the ANC, despite these allegations from her driver, from her former compatriots, from parents of people who've been killed. I mean, is she an embarrassment to everybody there? It would be somewhat wrong yeah. to prejudge the issue. Yeah. She still has to give evidence. Sure. And let the process take its yeah. course. What is good is that the process now is taking its course and that also prominent people from the ANC against whom allegations exist are called before the commission and that there is an open process of really getting to the truth about those allegations. But the commission isn't got, even, what, however it goes, the, the commission, commission can't is not imprison her. We, no, it's no, no good digging out her old no free power, Mandela t shirts or anything. It has because no the, power. The, yeah. <laughs> and, but the commission must get to the truth. Yeah. And they must get to the truth about all the atrocities. Will a stable South Africa survive the passing of Nelson Mandela whenever he goes, retires, yes, or I'm, whatever? I'm quite sure that we've laid a very good foundation. We have a good constitution in place. Uh, we have multi party democracy. We have a strong private sector. We have a strong civil society. Uh, there are red lights flashing, but they are more normal yes. than anything we've ever dealt with before. Yeah. But it's not, cha it's it's not a challenge for you because you've retired from politics. What, what, are, you, what are you doing now? Are you just, uh, I don't know, are you I'm, uh, going to the Springboks the rugby games? No, for the, first <laughs> few, for the first few months, I'm spending a lot of time on writing my autobiography. Right. Yeah. We hope to have it on the shelves by... September, October 1998. Well, this, is, this is a first for me. Somebody talking about a book that hasn't been written yet and yeah. published. You are, you are truly a reforming uh, I've always, uh, personage. I've, I've always been a good marketer as well. <laughs> yeah, but you're marketing well ahead of time, but, uh, which is not usual. Normally, it's people only meet me when they've got a book out. But, well, uh, it's but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, I'm so used to talk the truth, and you ask me, what am I doing? And I'm oh, coming book. Come on, come on. You're a politician. I'm, you're I'm a politician from a, a difficult background. I, you, you must have fibbed a bit in your I'm, years. I'm <laughs> running South Africa, I'm I don't know. many hours a day yeah. on the book. Mm. I'm making a lot of speeches. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm getting invitations from all over the world. This morning I flew in from Sweden where I spoke yesterday at Gothenburg. Right. And, uh, and I'm working a little bit yeah. on my golf handicap. Yeah. Uh, so you're big in Sweden? Uh, you're sort of, because uh, you've had a few problems between South Africa and Sweden. Uh, we had a wonderful meeting. Yeah. I and, and John Major yeah. and uh, Mrs. Butu addressed the conference. Oh, right. It all was on all leadership, and it was, stars, uh, yeah. it was a very, uh, yeah. well, all of us to a certain extent uh, have moved out of the direct spotlight. Yes. Which gives well, you, you resigned freedom. And John you know Major how wonderful it is. Yes. Not to count every word that you say. Yes. To, to be able to really speak your mind mm. because you no longer have the responsibility. Yeah. All it's, right, so you can say whatever wonderful. you like. Yes. So you're pleased all the reforms have gone through, or do you like it better when... Uh, your party was in, was in charge. I would have done everything. All the main decisions that I've taken, I would have taken exactly the same decisions with the hindsight that I now have. Yeah. I believed in what I did, and I still believe that that was the only real alternative in order to rescue the honor of our country, the integrity of my people, and to create a better life and a future for all South Africa. Okay, well, it's, uh, it's been interesting uh, posing questions to you, uh, Mr. Former President. Uh, but uh, has anybody here got any questions for Mr. Clark? Yes, gentleman at the back there with a the jumper. Do you think South Africa have any hope in beating England on Saturday? <laughs> oh, we're going to the big political issues now. <laughs> well, if, you I, if, if I were a betting man, I would arrange to meet you around the corner yeah. And my money is definitely on South Africa yeah. after what they've done to the French. Yes. The little hiccup when the Lions visited South Africa mm. is over, and yeah. uh, I, I'm with my team. I think. What we're about going now? To do I've got to ask well. you a difficult question because when South Africa won the World Cup, there was a suggestion made that the All Blacks from New Zealand had been poisoned uh, <laughs> in their hotel just to. Yeah. Now, 
this is a truth commission here. Uh, <laughs> did that happen, or is that just something they couldn't Actually, take? Actually, we've feet? referred it to the truth commission, <laughs> but thus far they haven't yeah. come up was with Was it a just uh, food in South Africa is always no. that bad? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, thank you very much for joining us. F.W. de Klerk. some news about this country the government has announced new plans to help millions of pensioners keep warm this winter they're going to be called cremations <laughs> next. my next guest is a comedy great he's been on television for more years than channel 5 has viewers in the 70s and 80s his shows regularly had 15 million viewers which a show like this could only lie about ladies and gentlemen please welcome Ronnie Corbett <laughs> So it seems natural to sort of put you in a put chair, chair because that's sort of your. No, but I'll, sort of, I'll just introduce you properly because uh, older viewers will obviously know you from the two Ronnies, and yes. younger viewers will know you from the best of two Ronnies. Yes. And <laughs> viewers unborn will know you from compilations of the of best the of the two of Ronnies. Ronnies. Christmas. Mm. That, the, how long was that on for? God. 17 years? Well, 18 yes, years? that's right. Yeah. 17, 18 Fantastic. years. Fantastic. And yeah. I. Very handy. And you weren't exactly a double act, because you were both like, individual performers who just happened to do that show together. That's right. Ron and I came together by David Frost. Uh, John Cleese, Ronnie and I, uh, in the Frost Report, yes. picked from various yes. worlds. John from the Second City Sound, Ronnie from working with Jimmy Edwards um, uh, and radio character comedy, and me from nightclubs, from Dan and yes. or Winston's nightclub. And he put us together and it uh, worked. Well, what I'll get on to that minute, but what did you yeah. do with Danny LaRue? What were you, were you his straight man, so I, to speak? I, or, I, or, I, what? <laughs> <laughs> did you run up his dresses or well, what? <laughs> so or you under his dresses, I, I don't know. What, <laughs> Sewing on a few sequins and things yeah. like that. Um, <laughs> no, Dan and I, well, I was the, yes, I was the hero to all Dan's heroines, really. Yes. I mean, uh, and of course, those days, in those days, the clubs were a fantastic place to work because uh, there was no, uh, no discos about. And I, I would think there were about 11 rooms in the West End that at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night put on proper shows with yeah. reviews to very glamorous girls, you know, uh, rather like. You can small still find those clubs if you look in the right well, places. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah. but um, you know, like Little Folly Bergers, proper mm. shows, and yeah. that's where we all started yeah. off, really. But you don't come from a sort of showbiz background. I think your father was a, a master baker. My father was a baker, yes. Yeah, so, so, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no. right, a baker, a baker. <laughs> well, yes, yeah. you're getting yeah. near it, weren't you? <laughs> yes, there was yeah. a danger there. Yes. Uh, uh, but um, yeah. <laughs> uh, carried down, the traditions yeah. carried through of the family. Yes. Uh, yes um, <laughs> be uh, careful. Be careful. Um, you're blind. No, but, the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't... Oh, you can't, you must squeeze them in, Clive. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, one way. Now the... I, <laughs> I love it. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, I've been hearing you squeeze them <laughs> in. I, uh, but you didn't, think, you didn't think about becoming a, a baker or in that sort of... You wanted to run away and become showbiz or...? Yes, well, the Nas National Service helped me to escape from that kind of work. Although I still bake at home and things. Yeah. All the traditions that my dad uh, set out, I make all the bread at home. You don't I, go I, put it on people's doorsteps? And no, no, I don't do things like that. I don't get up at 11. And my dad was an all-night baker. No, I do it in the morning. Yeah. So. But I mean, it's... Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, where are, what are we talking I don't know, about? I don't know. <laughs> so you, you mentioned national service. So you flew in the RAF, was that? I didn't fly in the RAF. No, oh, no, I, 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 no, no. Yeah. I, uh, I you, was, were you crashed in the RAF. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, I, I was, I was called. I was called a pilot officer, but that's a strange thing about the Air Force. You can be called that, though you don't fly. Right. I was in. So it's just a nickname. It is a nickname. <laughs> yes. uh, so were, you, were your family upset that you went into, you know, the? The racy world of, you know, from <laughs> Scotland and a yes, proper job. I and know. Clubs in London. Oh, oh. very worried, yes. very worried, Clive, <laughs> you know. It's a very precarious job you're going <laughs> into, you know. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, very. My dad wasn't so worried, because my dad was a bit of a natural adventurer. My mum yeah. was a bit worried. And, of course, I wasn't really physically cut out to be the sort of person that then went into the theatre. Why is that? Why well, I mean, they all expect, they expect you to look like, you know, Jack Buchanan or, yeah. you know, somebody, Stuart Granger. I yeah. mean, what's this little rascal going to yeah. do in, in, yeah. in, in the entertainment business, you know? So it was a bit but of a... But you can be any, anything in I don't comedy. Mean, you don't have to be... But you like didn't think that then, no. you see, in those days. Yeah. All actors seemed to be yeah. tall and spoke rather lovely English, yeah. you know? I mean, where, which part of Scotland, excuse me, am I allowed to ask a question? Not really, but... No, no, uh, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but where, which part of Scotland are you from? Well, I am from the borders, uh, the borders of uh, Middlesex and Hertfordshire. Oh, I thought... <laughs> 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 
Have, is there some water under? Yes, yeah. there is. Yeah. Yes, uh, just Sorry, give just me time to think where you're going next. All right. I, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you're. Well, I'm, I think I'm lapsing into you because uh, you're, it's a very sort of effective way, all that sort of style of sitting in the chair and going, and it, oh no, and the producer, you know, he said, yes, just yes. where I came on, oh, and the wife. I mean, is, that, is that your natural style? You always perform like that? Or was that imposed on you when you did telly? It was, uh, it was a sort of amplification ampli uh, as well. <laughs> oh, sorry, was that, <laughs> yeah. you picked the wrong glass, didn't it you? Was <laughs> <laughs> it was a sort of amplification of what I was doing. Yeah. Uh, and, and it seems to, uh, you know, it makes for a sort of easy prose, yes. so listenable, theatrical yeah. kind of smooth listening, you know. Yeah, I mean, the closest other person to your style, in a way, was uh, Frankie Howard, though he's more, more camp than you are, just yes. a bit more camp than it's you, but there. only just, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Am you, I at all camp? Well, we? you have a sort of... Uh, I don't know. A, <laughs> you it's the pink. It yes, is uh, the pink. <laughs> the no, but there's a sudden sort of style to you, a very sort of show-busy way. Yes. Which I think well, it's a battle, isn't there, between you, the sort of repressed Scottish <laughs> upbringing and the... <laughs> and the show business, yes. glitter, the glitter. Yes. Well, I, you see, I've, once again, I was brought up in the... Uh, uh, when we started the business, you uh, did like to put on a bit of yeah. gear, a bit of... So you looked yeah. something. People yeah. weren't going to pay prices to come in the theatre and see somebody walk on a sweatshirt and jeans, no. to be honest. Yeah. And I, I found it very difficult to kick that habit. Yes. Well, I'm just in that sort of rambling style, because Frankie... I tidy up. <laughs> yeah, <there we> are. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie, I would always be trying to tell a joke and go rambling off around yes. it. Yes. That's basically the, your same, style, isn't it? Same then? sort of and thing. The, you, you don't need to be telling a joke at all. You could just... The ramble is as funny as the eventual punchline. Well, uh, well I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> But not always. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like now. <for> example. <laughs> <laughs> and what is it like to be either your producer or your wife? Because uh, yeah, they're always kind of introduced into the stories, the butt of your jokes. Yes. Uh, well, Anne doesn't mind. Anne doesn't mind at all because she has grown up. She's worked with so many in uh, in her life, so many comics. She's yeah. worked. But she's been married uh, to you for years and years God, and years. Yes, actually, but yeah. she doesn't mind the yeah. jokes. She, you know, you get any, she says, "Oh, how dare you make another reference to me?" I'll oh no, she doesn't mind at all. Yeah. I mean, she's. I mean, when we got married all those years ago, and she arrived on the bridal bike, she, um, <laughs> she no, I have to tell you, Clive, there yeah. was a mix, <laughs> there was a, yes. there was a mix-up at the florist with right. the bouquet, yeah. and she eventually walked down the aisle with a floral dartboard, <laughs> <laughs> made of carnations. The message read, "Goodbye, soon from the lads at the Rose and Crown." Yeah, so that was a yeah. good start. Good and start. Very really good start. Yeah. And we couldn't afford. Yeah. <laughs> You want me to go? She yeah. could. <laughs> Please. I'm looking for signs. Yeah. I, uh, I'm chuckling we, away here. I know. Yeah. We, uh, and we couldn't afford the, uh, the organ, so we had to take our own organ along. Right. And, uh, so, but, and it was... But, <laughs> no, no, not, not as rude as that. Yeah, no, but, yeah, no. uh, and it, was, it worked very well, but the monkey was a bit of a nuisance. <laughs> I have Setting a very bad example to the choir. All right, but well... now you can come yeah, in now. Well, about, now. Yeah. about half an hour ago, you mentioned that you started with David Frost, and he kind of picked you out to put him on your show. And yes, you half an hour. Well, it's, it's it seems like... I don't know, but, but the, the, uh, <laughs> just before the show started, I think. But anyway, the, uh, here I'm back and doing you again. Uh, anyway, anyway, the producer wanted me to ask. Yeah. That, uh, the glasses on. <laughs> Thank you very much. Come on, I want to see. Anyway, you. anyway, the. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is. Wow, they're powerful, aren't they? They are powerful. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now look, you said David Frost picked you up, and it, there's that classic sketch which. Uh, uh, most people remember with uh, John Cleese being very, very tall as yes. the upper class guy, Ronnie Barker, medium height, middle class, and you as the short guy being yes. the, the working class guy. And yes. that's a sort of classic sketch. Yes. And yes. now that, um, that sort of accentuated your size because most of the time on television, when people say, oh, he's short, he's tall, nobody knows because the you're always one inch shorter than the TV sets. So. That's right. But there you were showing. Now, but th has that always played a big part in your jokes? The fact well, that people well, say, oh, he's small? Well, people say that. Are you really small? They say to me. I should say. You're just no, playing it. They're playing it. Yes, I wear special <laughs> shoes, I say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you, you and the other Ronnie went off and did the, the two Ronnies together. Again, yes. Was that people putting you together like the Spice Girls? Or did you have a sort of natural empathy with each other? No, there was a natural empathy because Ron and I were very aware that most of the other boys had been at Cambridge or Oxford, so they were Oxford and younger than us, of course. Uh, and Ron had been in rep and I'd been in co concert party. So we were really essentially theatrical people. Yes. So we were comfort 
comfortable with each other in a way that we perhaps wouldn't have been with sure. otherwise we felt a bit um, and, and by the time you hit your sort of big fame you'd already been you know going around a lot hadn't you? it wasn't like nowadays you get one one oh good no. gig you get a no, a show right. on Channel 4 or no, a bad right. gig at well, show on Channel 5, no, but uh, you, 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 had, you had plenty of experience. Yes, that's right. Well, we, of course, in the days when we were all starting, you really weren't, I, was thought, I thought about it the other day, you weren't allowed to be funny at all, really, for the first few seasons you did in a rep or a concert. All right. You were taught... You were taught how to, <laughs> and I'm still not allowed yes. to <laughs> yeah, I can see it bubbling yes, up inside. I know. It, the little you learned your lesson <laughs> well. <laughs> you, no, I mean, yeah. when you first were allowed to speak on your own yeah. in variety, four minutes you were allowed, mm, and then you went on to seven minutes. And if you did longer than four minutes, somebody came round and knocked on your door and said, take that half yeah. minutes, four minutes. Well, four minutes is nothing to you, I that's know. just one joke for one you. One joke. That's, uh, well, I've just walked on. Yes. Right, <laughs> but, um, uh, so, the chaps now who have to do 45 minutes straight away, it's very yeah. difficult. You see. Hard work, but... So uh, difficult. Yeah. Now, what I've got to ask you, uh, yes. you know, about golf, because yes. what is it with golf and comedians? Or is uh, it just an excuse to wear silly trousers and a funny jumper? Is no, that no. It? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rather smart gear we wear. Yeah. No, but, uh, it's, uh, yeah. it's very <laughs> insulting about golf, isn't yeah. it? No, I, uh, um, the thing is that it's always been a lovely game for performers because if you're in town on tour yeah. playing the theatre in a strange place for a week as we all very often mm. are you go up to the golf course you were made very welcome and you don't feel such a stranger right. so, so it's theatrically yeah. been uh, you know very good and that's yeah, are, you, are you good at it are you I'm, good? I'm quite good yes I'm quite good I always have you know a bit of golf every day nine holes this morning five really played five fell down four <laughs> and I <laughs> Now, just uh, going back to the two Ronnies again, because the, the one Ronnie left, or yes. he re retired. Was that a blow to you? Do you think, oh, no, we could have carried another 20 years of this? <laughs> well, um, I think we could have gone on a, a bit longer, I have to say, but um, Ron didn't feel well, and he'd lost his appetite a bit for it as well, yeah. and uh, he gave me plenty of warning. 18 months, he told me before, yeah. after the Christmas show, he said, I'm going to pack it up and not do any more. And so I got time to get used to it but it was a shock yeah. of course and uh, I had to rethink my life because you know this business is you think people do think that once one's gone what yeah because you know that Clive uh, last week um, <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> last week no I became I got my senior citizens rail card All right. last yeah. week oh, well done. Uh, and the week before I've been traveling half there so, <laughs> 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 So when you're performing, you obviously perform around uh, England and Scotland and so forth, but do you yes. travel abroad? Do you do that yes, I've been to South Africa, I've been yes. to concerts in South Africa. Oh, right. And Australia. How recently have you been in South Africa? I, in South Africa, perhaps 18 months ago. Oh, right, okay. Yes. yes. Uh, you weren't playing Sun City oh, 10 years ago. And no, 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 not allowed to do that. Oh, no, fair enough. Yeah. And, and in Australia, you must have gone. Yeah, are you big in Australia? I mean, uh, are you a, you're a big star? <laughs> <laughs> you must, because they love our comedians over there. Uh, it's better than Big Down Under, yeah. that one. I, uh, <laughs> That was my next one, but I'm sure you are. But <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, yes, we've gone there for 18 years, really. Yeah. 18 summers, um, winters. There, there are, you know, well, uh, whatever. Yeah. Oh yes, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> uh, Ron and I, the families, we all went out there for a whole year to do some televisions and some concerts. So uh, Australia, I loved. Right. There. Yes. Well, now it's been uh, nice uh, talking to you. But uh, <laughs> let's see if there's any questions from the audience. The lady there with a hand up, quicker than anybody else. Yes. Yes. I'd just like to ask if your comedy or professional life has ever become confused with your real or private life. Well, what do you mean by that? I just, uh, you mean how, how confused could uh, his life be with his... R I mean... Yeah. Well, uh, the, the thought just occurred to me earlier when you were explaining about your wedding. Yeah, oh yeah. To that. me, that was obviously made up, but sometimes if you it make... It wasn't! Up <laughs> <laughs> Don't break the spell! I thought that was a <laughs> reportage. It was like having Kate Aidy here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if you ever become confused with reality and fantasy or whether other people mm. who meet you become mm -hmm. confused. Yeah. If all, of all our lives together, Ronnie B and I, we would be seen at, you know, at stations or at hotels, and we d we would never did a anything remotely funny in public. And one day, apart from one day, we were boarding one of these buses at the airport, you know, with the door shut on you, mm. uh, and they would go the way. And Ronnie got in, and after he got in, the door shut, and yeah. I was outside. Yeah. And uh, Everybody in the bus were uh, hysterics <laughs> because <laughs> we thought it's that is the way we travel. That is the way we travel. That's it. Thank you very much, yeah. Ronnie <laughs> Carpet. <laughs> nice you to be here tonight. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Nice to meet you. Good night. Good night.
the comedy continues tomorrow night on BBC Two, Shooting Stars, The Fast Show and Have I Got News For You from 9.